Welcome back. In our previous lesson, I told you we'll be looking at functions and formula. But before we go to functions and formula, there are some very important things I want you to know and be very familiar with. So pay attention and follow me as I talk about those things. Okay. Now, in the previous lesson, I told you that you can select a column. You can select a row as well, right? So when I ask you to select column B, you just click on this column B. You click on the B, isn't it? And when I ask you to select a row, let's say row 3, you click on the 3 here, right? So that's how to select a column and a row. Now, when I also ask you to select, let's say, cell B3, you just click on this. This is B3, isn't it? Good. What if you want to select multiple cells? For instance, let's say you want to select from cell A1 to cell F1. Okay. Now, there are two ways of doing that. You can click on the first one, which is cell A1. Then, you left click without removing your finger. Then you drag it to the last. Okay, so you've selected multiple cells together. Okay, now another way of doing it is you can click on the first one and then hold on the shift key. Put your finger on the shift key without removing it. Then you press the forward arrow key. You see that? You press it again, press it so you select up to where you are going. You get it. So that's another way of selecting multiple cells. And you can do that downwards as well. You select it downwards, you left click, then you hold on it and drag up to where you are going. Okay. You can use the other method as well. You hold on the shift key, then you click on the down arrow key. You see that? You see that? So it depends on how you want to select the cell. Okay. Now, what if? You just want to select, let's say, John Benson, Nana Kwame, and uh, Isaac. What if you just wanted to select those three cells? How will you do that? Now, to select those three cells that are not close together, you see, they are not close together. To select them, you click on the first one. Then you hold on the control key with your finger without removing it. Then you go to the next one you want to select. You just go there and click on it. Left click, okay, this one. Then you go to the other one you also want to select. Let's say I did. While your finger is still on the control key, okay, then you come to the Isaac, you click on it. You see, you've selected the three together. You can also select something else while your finger is still on the control key. So you can select as many cells as you want. While your finger is still on the control key. Okay. So that's another way of selecting multiple cells. Also, you can select multiple columns or multiple rows as well. Let's say I want to select column A, column C, and column E. Since they are not close to each other, I can click on column A first. Hold on the control key. Okay. Then you click on the C. Then you click on the E. You see that I've been able to select three columns together. You can select multiple rows together as well. So I can select, let's say, row two. Then you hold on the control key. Then you click on five. Then you click on eight. So you see, I've been able to select three different rows that are far apart. So that's how to select multiple rows and columns. Okay. Now, Let's say you want to select from column A to column C. Since they are close to each other, you can select the first column, which is column A. Then you hold on the shift key and click on the last one. It will select the three columns together. You see that? So that's how to select multiple columns as well. Now, what if you wanted to select the entire spreadsheet? You want to select the whole spreadsheet. So to select the entire spreadsheet, you just click on this. Look at it here. You just click on it. If you select the entire spreadsheet, 
Is that okay? Also, what if you just want to select all the parts that are filled with information? Just this part from here to here. You just want to select that part only. What if you just want to select that part only? So to do that, you can click on the first one. When you click on the first one, containing the data. When you click on the first one, then you hold on Control plus A. It will select the parts that you have information only. If you select that part in, you see that. So that's how to also select multiple cells. Okay. Now let's look at something also called fill. Okay. So let me go to sheet two and do that. Now if I enter, let's say, fill up here in this first cell. Now look at something. If I come to the corner here, okay, you see that the cursor has turned to black. And then I hold on it and drag it down, let's say up to 7. What happens? The others fill with the same information in the first cell, which is fillers. So that's what we call fill. Now, look at this. Let's look at the ones in form of numbers. Now, if I have one here, okay, and I hit enter, then I come to that corner again and then let me and drag, let's say up to the eighth part. It fills the other cells with the same information in the first one. Isn't it? Good. Now let me undo this. To undo something is control plus Z. Okay. What if I'd wanted you to just number them? Let's say from one to seven or one to eight. To do that, you just enter the first one, which is one, then you go to the second and enter it as two. Okay. Then after entering the first and the second, then you can come to the first one and then left click and select the second one together. After selecting the second one, then you come to the corner, then you left click and drag up to where you want to number up to. You see that? So you've been able to number that. Also, you can number something like 2, 4, 6, 8. To do that, just give it a clue on what to do. Okay. So for the first one, you can enter 2. Then the second one, you enter 4. As soon as you enter 2 and 4, let's select the two together. Left click and drag. Then come to the corner here. Then you left click and drag to the last. What has happened? Because you entered 2, 4, which has difference of 2, the subsequent ones also create difference of 2. You see that 2 so from 4, it goes to 6. From 6 to 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, going. When you be for 3 as well, that's 3, 6. If you continue, 9, 12, going. Okay. Let's also look at undo and redo. Even though I've spoken about undo several times, but let me still talk about it briefly. Now, whatever I've done here, if I want to undo it, look at the back arrow at the top here. Okay. Just click on it. It will undo what you just did. You see that? It will undo. If you want to redo, then look at the forward arrow at the front here. Just click on it to redo what you just undo. Okay. You can undo using the arrow and you can redo using the same arrow. The shortcut for undo is Control plus Z or Control plus Z. Okay. So Control together with Z will undo. Have you seen that? But control together with Y will redo. You see that? Control with Y will redo. And control plus Z will undo. How does play? Good. So let me undo all this. Then we go back to our previous sheet and look at something else. Also, you can delete a particular content by just clicking on that content. Then you click on the delete key on your keyboard. That's all. But I don't want to delete that. So let me undo what I just did right now. So, control plus Z. And you can delete multiple cells as well. So, let me say I'm deleting this, uh, this page. So, just click on the delete key to delete them. You can also use clear content. To use clear content, right click. Then, you come down to clear content. You see that. So, when you click on clear content, it will clear them. You see that. Then, let's use control plus Z to bring them back. Let's look at how to inspect new columns and rows. If you want to insert a row above this row one, 
Okay. What is currently at row one? If you want to insert a row above it, then you click on that row itself. Then you right click and come down to insert. It will insert a new row above it. Have you seen that? So you now have a new row above it. Also, you can insert a new column. Let's assume you should have entered the ages of employee before the department. So to do that, just come to the column for the department so that we can insert a column before it. So right click and then come down to insert. So to insert a new column before the department. So you can now write ages there. So let's write ages. Let's quickly pick some age for them. So let's say this person is 36 years, then 34. Okay, so we pick some ages for them. Now, you see that this column is too wide. Okay, so we can reduce the width. To reduce the width, you can click on the entire column. Then you come to the ending of the column. You see that the arrow has changed. Then you left click on it, hold on it, and drag to reduce it. Okay, you drag let work to reduce it so you see that I've reduced it you can reduce it more but let me leave mine like this so you've been able to insert a new column you've been able to insert a new row also you can make multiple cells together let's say i want to make from cell a1 to g1 okay to do that you can select the first cell then you left click and so you come to this place you see merge and center you can either use merge and center or you come to the arrow beside you and choose another type of merge you want to use. So merge cells, merge across, and merge cells. Cells that you've merged, you can merge them over there as well. So I want to use the merge and center. So I've merged and center. So I can enter something and let's say employees at Osu branch. So now look at all these lines in the spreadsheet. They are called grid lines. Okay, grid lines. You can also remove them. Now, to remove the grid lines, come to the view tab. The view tab at the top here. Click on it. Then you see grid lines. You see that the box is checked. So you can uncheck the box. When you uncheck the box, all the grid lines will remain. You see that. If you want the grid lines back, you just check the box. All the grid lines will come back. So let's add a full color to this. So you come to fill color here. Okay, then you click on the arrow beside it. Then you select a fill color. So let me select blue. Then let me make the font color white. So you click on the arrow for font color. Then you select white. Let me make it bold. Yes. So let me add some fill color for the viewers heading as well. So you click on the first one. You left click, hold on it, and drag to the last. Okay. Then come to the fill color. Then you click on the arrow beside it. Then you select the full color you want to use. So let me use this. Uh, let me use this. I can also decide to add some full color for their salary. Okay. So let me choose this. So you can decide to design it any how you want it to look. Okay. Make it beautiful. Is that okay? Now there's something called format painter. For instance, the format used here. If you want to copy a particular format from here to this side, you can click on, let's say, this cell. Then you see the brush at the top here, this brush at the top left corner here. You click on it. Then you come to where you want to paint that format. So let's say I want to paint that format here. Then you just click on it once. The format here will come here. Whatever format you've done here, whether the font style, font size, or whatever, it will come here as well. You see that? But I don't want that, so let me work on this. I'm just trying to use that to show you what format painter is. Okay. There are so many other things here that you can play around with. But for the conditional formatting, don't worry, we'll do that after functions and formula. Okay. So in the next lesson, we'll be looking at functions and formula. So I'll end this here for now. Thank you.